Hello, welcome back to Tarot Time with Andy. Thank you for being here. This is my vibrational reading. Please do your own research for entertainment purposes and allegedly. Hello, good morning and good evening, good afternoon, and thank you for being here. Today I want to cover the um, Highland Park shooter, the mass shooter from Illinois. As many of you might probably know, we are getting so many shootings here. 22-year-old uh, Robert Cremo. Uh, was seen in the silver Honda leaving. Uh, he he got all his weapons legally, allegedly. He dressed as a woman. They also believed that there was a wig involved because some said there was long hair involved. He climbed up the side of a building through the staircase that was attached to the building, did the dirty deed, dropped his weapon, and then blended it, got down off the staircase, and then blended in, escaped through the um, silver Honda. He was spotted in the car by police officers who noticed him. He used a high velocity AR-15, 70 rounds. Uh, so far from what I'm getting, one another person just passed away. So now I believe that's seven dead and 30 injured. One gentleman put his infant child into the trash bin uh, to save you know, to have some security there. And that's good. That was, I was happy to hear that. Um, yeah. So anyways, he blended in quite well. Uh, he also, one thing I noticed when I did a little deeper research into him, he had YouTube videos, multiple. He also was on Spotify and he's, his video is still on rumble right now where you could actually watch his animation. Um, it is, you know, uh, you know, he's rapping and one, one of his, um, phrases, one of his song, the lyric, the one that I watched that was on rumble, this is part of the lyrics. It was, I'm living in a dream. Nothing's real. <clears throat> oh, excuse a Frank F this world. I just want to scream pink. And then I just want to scream and it just kind of replayed, you know, living in a dream. Nothing's real blank this world. I just want to scream. And then he mentioned in the song something about Rose. So he must have been on heartache situation here uh, because another song that was on Spotify uh, was labeled, I gave you my heart and I haven't seen it since. So he did a lot of dark emo rap music and that's why YouTube took him down. And so it's not there, but Rumble still has the one. It's just animation where part of it, he has pink hair with a dress, just like what he did. He wore a dress, dressed as a woman, and then he goes back to his dark hair. He's heavily tatted. I notice on his cheek, his left cheek, would it be his, no, it'd be his right cheek, his right cheek, my left, his right. It looked like he was keeping score. He had tallies on his cheek, uh, quite a few of them, and then one cross. So it looked like he was keeping score of something. And uh, I think he's severely probably got total deep psychosis to the point where he may not qualify to even be uh, able to hold up in court right now. Uh, that's kind of my concern right now is he's so psychotic that he, he basically needs a lot of treatment before they can hold him accountable. And even then, is he going to get the insanity defense? So we'll Cuomo... Let me get that spelling correct here. His name is Robert Cremo. Cremo. Robert Cremo. Lots of uh, facial tattoos, neck tattoos. Robert Cremo. Will he be able to be of sound mind for trial? Will he be able to be of sound mind for trial? Robert Cremo. Robert Cremo. Will he be of sound mind for trial? No. Right now, it's a no. So they may probably, will they later on? Later on, will he be able to be of sound mind for trial? Later on, will he be of sound mind for trial? No. And it was, although it was very premeditated, he is very sick, very psychotic, very broken. And uh, who knows? But let's get some cards on him. Robert Cremo. Robert Cremo. What's likely to occur with for Robert Cremo? Self-sacrificial. Yeah, he wanted to sacrifice people, the hangman. Uh, he should. He did go inward. He thought about it. So it's basically pre-planning. Uh, it is very self-sacrificial, doing a duty. He thought it was his duty to self-sacrifice people. 
And he did think about it. He definitely went inward and he thought about it. And he was in pause mode thinking about it. The hangman. Let's get to the challenging position for Robert Cremo. The challenging position. General energy spread. How is it going to go? Robert Cremo. Challenging situation. And this is my double major deck. Every card has a face. Upright and reverse. So if I see it falling out in reverse, I'm going to put it upright. Just so you know. And it's the double major by Muse, for those of you asking. And it is a favorite of mine. Challenging position for Robert Cremo. Challenging position for Robert Cremo. Challenging position, the world card. Yeah, he couldn't level up. He was, he, he was a failure. He was a failure in life. That was a challenge. Being out in the world was a challenge. So probably antisocial. Had to wear a social chameleon mask. Didn't like it. Heavy mask. Low functioning. Antisocial personality disorder more than likely. Uh, feeling that the world is probably against him because it's his challenging position. So everybody's against me. Paranoia. Psychosis. They're out to get me. I got to take them out before they get me. That's part of some of the schizophrenic type of mindset. Could have been drug-induced schizophrenia. Many times for young people in their early 20s, if they have a mental illness situation, they do any drugs, it gets them into a very psychotic state of mind with very schizophrenic tendencies. And that's what I'm feeling with these two cards here. So he basically uh, had more than likely you know, inferiority complex going on. And that's why he did what he did. Very inferior, inferiority, uh, shame, being lazy, not getting the results he wants in life, uh, not feeling successful and wanting success, wanting to be seen, wanted to level up and all of that. So wanting and wanting also, uh, he knew that it would become a global situation. Everyone would know about it. He wanted to be, it's infamy, wanting some infamy there. Let's get to the... Feelings in the situation. Feelings in the situation. We have here the Knight of Pentacles in reverse. He was not making slow, steady progress in his life. He was failing. He was not studious. He was not academic. He didn't have a lot going for him. Very low vibe. Low energy. Negative mindset. Very negative mindset. Uh, the Knight of Pentacles is a very aggressive card. Uh, they typically will go after what they want in life, but he probably at this point in time, because it's in reverse, gave up on life. No resort, no results, very lazy, giving up, blaming others, inferiority complex. There it is. Feeling shame. The way to regulate the shame is to take other people down. Very antisocial. I'm going to take you down to my level, basically. Let's, let's even out the playing field. If I take you and you're at my level, then I can feel good about myself. Let's get to the hidden energy. Yes, the hidden energy is the Pope card. He felt it was his his duty. He felt kind of like a spiritual connection to it of some kind. And that's what he's hiding. And he felt that it would level him up. Let's level it up. And let's send him to spirit. Because this is also going to the other side. Some of the cards with this position, you will see a staircase to heaven. So sending them up to the spirit world because it's a spiritual card. Uh, the past position, past position for, for this gentleman, Robert Cremo. Robert Cremo, past position, recent past, recent past for Robert Cremo. Robert Cremo in the past position was the sun card. He did feel some happiness. He was apparently at some point in time making some momentum and had some passion. That was probably when he had his YouTube channel up and going and felt that he had some promise in his life. So at some point he did, even though it was very dark themed. And then at the, the going into the future, he had some sort of gut feeling here about things that weren't gonna work out for him, that he was gonna falter. Uh, he was happy at one point in time. He seeded a lot of this. So this is once again, where you have some negative cards with the sun card. It does represent seeding and, and, and growing these, these attributes over here. He grew this attribute. He grew this attribute. He grew this attribute. It's, it's shining a light. So he did shine a light on it instead of focusing on what he could do. He was focusing on leveling up, focused on the fact that 
self-sacrificial cards here. He was focused on self-sacrificial energy. He was focused on the world seeing him do that. He was focused in highlighting and shining the light on the fact that he felt like a failure and that he thought people should go to heaven. He also shined the light in his mind that he could he could have spiritual awakening of some kind. He can have um, spirit connection. So he felt kind of this, there's kind of a religious vibe here, which is really interesting. There is, there is definitely this sort of religious vibe. I didn't expect to see that. So let's get to the next position here. We have here the full, take the risk. He decided he was going to take the risk. Next position, the outside influences we have here is the lover's card. Yep, it was because of a lover. It might have been the rose. There was a, a lady's name mentioned in his, one of his songs. It was Rose. So that's because of Rose, testing a relationship. So it was probably about, you know, wanting connection, but not really able to obtain it because he is insecure, uh, felt like a failure. So he felt like an outcast, I would say. Hopes and fears, hopes and fears for the shooter, hopes and fears, hopes and fears. His hope was the battle of the wills. He would be able to be successful at doing it, and he did. He did. He was very successful at what he did. He thought it was just his right to do it. It is black and white thinking also, because many times with the chariot card, you'll see a black and white um, two animals in the front pulling that chariot. So it's a total battle of the wills, a battle of the wills against lovers. I think he had kind of a feeling of gripeness there and taking a risk. So wasn't working out to him. I'm going to get these here to go with that. What I have here, yeah, he felt like he was broke in society. He didn't have much to move forward. It was try it was a battle of the wills with lovers, competition, falling behind because he didn't have the financial means. He didn't have it all and and it was just a fantasy and a lie. So back to his lyrics of his song, the world is not real. The world is not real. It's all an illusion. F the world. Uh, what was the lyrics? F the world. And yeah, um, yeah, you know, what was it? Yeah. So yeah, it's escapism. So he wanted to pretend he liked the idea of trying to have money probably to date looking like he was having some dating issues, acceptance issues, and it was all coming to light that he was never probably going to be a man of means. And that was a wound. That was a mortal wound to his psyche, to his grandiosity. A lot of times with mental illnesses, it's not just in the narc brain, but other brains have grandiosity as well. If you listen to Dr. Sam Vaughn, he discusses this uh, quite in depth, uh, a good hour long videos about the grandiosity of several mental illnesses. When the grandiosity mind and reality collide, they go into a psychotic rage, a psychotic uh, detachment. And that's basically probably what happened because he was not going to ever attain what he wanted. So that was a mortal wound, a mortal wound of, of relationship, a mortal wound of its competition, its struggles. I have to win. I got to win, 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 win. Uh, psychopaths are obsessed with winning. They're completely, utterly obsessed with winning and getting a leg up over other people. And he was not going to attain that. He was not going to get that with that King of Pentacles in reverse. He would never be in the winning, winning position. And so that's why he had to lash out. I'm going to take you down to my level because I'll never get what I want. It's all about winning. Winning, control, power, attaining power. He wasn't going to have that. He wanted that king of pentacles upright. That's a man of power. That's a man of substance. He was never going to be that. So let's get to the next position, the final call. A final call. Yep, he wanted love. He was being rejected. He was being rejected. We have here emotional, emotional card. It made him very emotional and a failure here, cracking fallen apart and realized he was very emotional about wanting to do this. He knew this is what his intentions were, is to make other people's world go into reverse, literally breaking apart their entire reality. Whatever thought process, whatever they had going on would be destroyed by him. 
Uh, there is no leveling up with that world in reverse. There's no empathy. He lacked empathy for the world, for people around him. He had an inability to empathize. So once again, inferiority complex, very impractical, shame-based, blames others, giving up. If I'm giving up, you're going with me. And he was very emotional about doing it. He was emotionally connected to getting this done. Uh, and he felt happy about it. He felt good about it. Uh, it was a pleasure to do this. So that's that sickness here, uh, that Machiavellian brain, that he got some duping delight pleasure by ruining other people's lives completely uh, and sending them down and breaking up their entire life. At the bottom of the deck, we have here the Page of Swords. It would, it would be a message that everybody would get that he did it. He was responsible, and he wants everyone to know he's responsible. He wanted that message being sent out there with the Page of Swords. He was very restless. He was very inquisitive. He did his homework. He put a lot of mental energy into it. He was very enthusiastic and eager to do it. This was not all talk. In a reverse position, it's all talk, but it's upright. He meant it. He did it. He planned it. He wanted it. He's very sick. So this was a message he wants to send out to the world. And that was at the bottom of the deck. That was that highlights the whole situation. And then in the center of the deck, what do I have here? I have to turn these around. He knew that he would end up doing this. He would end up in a crash and burn situation. I'm going to crash and burn. And I'm going to be seen as a traitor with the, with the hangman in the reverse position. Because then they could take him alive. He would not crash and burn, but just be viewed as a total traitor and a loser. So you're now a traitor and a loser because that's truly who he is. He felt that way about himself and he could not alter his perceptions or his mind. Could have been doing a lot of drugs and that's what drove him down that road. Had he been clean, maybe he wouldn't have gone down that road. But I'm thinking there's a lot of drugs involved uh, for that psychotic uh, episode. So let's find out. Was he doing a lot of drugs? Hard, like especially speed speed type drugs was he doing speed or anything that adds to the uh fight or flight was he doing like fight or flight speed adrenaline drugs yes was he doing downer drugs too was he doing downers was he doing downers was he doing downer drugs as well yes did he was he on an upper when he did this was he on an upper when he did this an upper yes so that's that adrenaline rush. It also gives them a dopamine hit. Uh, a lot of these kids, they get so into their um, social media, their gaming, all of that. It's that dopamine hit. And when you're doing that constant dopamine hit, it destroys the serotonin. When the serotonin is destroyed because you're doing constant dopamine hits, there's more of a long-term depression and insomnia. And then if you're mixing it with, you know, uppers, you're going to have insomnia, which is going to trigger that psychosis, uh, seeing things, hearing things, you know. So I think it's just a combination of pre-existing condition of mental illness mixed with drugs and feeling like a failure in society. Very classic shooter, very classic uh, uh, serial killer type of energy, uh, very antisocial energy. He probably is a sociopath probably not a psychopath. Um, so let me ask, is he a sociopath or a psychopath? Is he a psychopath? Is he a psychopath? Is the shooter a psychopath? Is the shooter a diagnosable psychopath? No. Is he a sociopath? Is he sociopathic? Yes. Okay. Was he abandoned by any caregiver when he was a child? Did he feel the abandonment as a child, was there any abandonment issues? Abandonment issues, yes. Was he abandoned by a parent, caregiver? Was he abandoned by a parent or a caregiver? Yes. Yeah, it does a lot of long-term damage, you guys. Couldn't regulate himself, didn't have the proper help. It was unrecognized. A lot of times that happens. You get a struggling family working, trying to make ends meet. They don't recognize the suffering of their own children. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Till next time, like and subscribe. Bye, you guys.